This is the Metasonics RK5 tube-based low-pass gate. Since it combines Solonics light-dependent resistors or factuals, along with a 17JK8 dissimilar dual triode tube, it delivers, according to Eric Barber of Metasonics, the full spectrum of ill-mannered electronics. Its unusual architecture is going to introduce some artifacts into the sound that's going to make it sound different than any other low-pass gate in your system. In just a little bit, I'm going to dive into the details of how it works, but first let's go through a quick overview. There are two different channels to the RK5. Because there are dissimilar triodes in the tube, and because it's hard to match factorals, even though Metasonics tries, the two channels sound different. In this unit, channel 1 happens to have a longer decay, where channel 2 tends to be a bit faster. I have your typical white noise from the Moog Mother 32 going to channel 1. As I start to increase the decay of the envelope feeding the CV input on the RK5, you'll start to hear some sound. The green trace is the audio output, not the CV input, but the audio output of the RK5. And you see what looks like an envelope shape. One of the idiosyncrasies of the RK5 is it has quite a bit of what's called CV or control voltage bleed through. What that means is that you're going to get a big subsonic DC thump in your sound. The wiggles are the noise. As I increase the amount of decay, the noise component becomes more prominent on top of that thump. So just by playing with the envelope driving it, you can change the character of the sound. On the other side, I'm feeding it an FM oscillator pair, the Moog's square wave driving the linear FM oscillator in the disting. Right now I have no modulation index, so we have just the sine wave from the disting coming into channel 2 of the RK5. You get a little bit of a nice sine wave sort of kick drum there. As I increase the modulation index, we get more of a tonal or higher pitch sound. And again, I can fine tune the sound by how long of an impulse I'm feeding the RK5. And the two channels together. And indeed, one of my favorite uses for low pass gates in my own system is to feed it either very noisy oscillators or noise sources themselves to create my percussion tracks. Okay, let's go ahead and simplify this patch and go through in more detail exactly how the RK5 is responding to control voltage and what the audio sounds like coming out. Now that I've simplified the patch, I want to focus on how the RK5's decay profile differs a bit from your ordinary low pass gate. I'm going to start driving some pulses to trigger an envelope generator, which is coming to the CV input on the RK5. It does not have a strike input like some low pass gates. Everything's done through the CV input, but as you'll see, this does not respond the same as a normal envelope input. I've got white noise, again coming from the Mother 32. And with the shortest impulse I can feed it from the Mother's envelope generator, you hear just that little bit of a pulse. As I increase the decay time slightly on channel 2, the faster channel of the RK5, you hear a nice thump come in, in addition to the noise. So the yellow trace is the audio output from the RK5, and the blue trace is the envelope that I'm feeding it in. As I increase the decay time, it comes to a point where you don't really increase the decay of the RK5 so much, and I'll explain the reason why later. So that's the fast side of the RK5, pretty well damped. Let's move over to the slow side. Same envelope time. Much longer decay, much more pronounced noise or thunder sheet sort of sound. Just a little bit of a slewed attack. And we'll take this back down to minimum decay. As I shorten the decay, you do hear it does get punchier. Still has this long tail, but the attack portion is punchier. So there's a nice timbral variation depending on how long of a decay you're feeding the CV input.
And when I reduce the pulses, the noise dies out pretty far. I mean, the RK5 does have some bleed through, and they do say in the manual, if you need exact silence, follow it with another VCA, or even cascade the two channels. But its bleed through is actually not too bad compared to other vectoral based low pass gate designs. For example, let's pull this back up again, get a moderate decay time, and compare its slow side to the slow side of the Make Noise LXD. A really common low pass gate that has two different responses. It has a slow side and a fast side as well. Same CV input, same noise. Here it takes a while to build up. That's part of the nature of the different Vactrol that's being used by Make Noise compared to the Vactrol inside the Metasonics. And here the profile is a lot different. It's decaying a lot faster, which is making it sound dull as well. Now I'm using only the one pole output of the AUX-D compared to the RK5, which is a two pole filter that still sounds darker. I'll increase the decay time. And you hear that the LXD, which is a fairly common low pass gate, knocks down the high frequencies much faster than the RK5 does. Take it down to the minimum. And the timbre characteristic is pretty constant across different decay times. It's not quite the difference you hear in the RK5. It's just a longer decay rather than a big timbre change. If I turn off the pulses, you'll still hear a pretty fair amount of white noise leak through. Now over time, this will decay as the particular brand of actuals in the LXC also decay back down to maximum resistance. But in this way, the RK5 is actually a little bit better behaved. Okay, let's get back to a decay again. And a pulse. Here, build back up again. Let's go to the shorter, snappier side of the LXT up here in the two pole side. It's actually a brighter tone, but shorter in duration. Not a bad little thump there. And again, it has bleed through as well. So just for some back to back comparison, here's the fast side of the LXD to the fast side of the RK5. Bit chiffier of an attack. A little bit more energy through with a longer decay time. Now compare that again back to the 12 dB side on the LXD. So a bit more muted on the RK5. If I go to the long side of the RK5, channel one, you hear that sort of soft mallet sound compared to the slow half of the LXD. Harder attack, but faster damping. So the RK5 really does have a very different sound and a different decay profile compared to a normal low pass gate. Okay, let's kill the pulses. Let's get to the secret of how to coax different sounds out of the RK5. It comes down to the way that it responds to its CV input. It's very different than you might expect. Now normally, a low pass gate does work like a VCA and a VCF. Buchla referred to VCAs as gates, and his low pass gate just added some low pass filtering onto his normal VCA action. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna switch my audio output over to my FM oscillators, but I'm gonna take out all my modulation so it's only a sine wave, so it's not too nasty for you to listen to. And I'm gonna play around with the CV going into these. First, I'm gonna go over to the long side, of the LXD just to give you an idea of how low pass gate might normally respond. The blue line on the data is going to be the CV that I'm feeding the low pass gate, and the yellow line is going to be the audio in response. So as I start to increase the DC offset, 
You'll see the blue line creep up. You'll see the audio immediately come up. Up till I get to a point of around 5 volts or so. I'll go ahead and pull the audio so you can see where the blue line, the CV, is at. Just over 5 volts. Go back down to zero here. And we go back down to silence. But as I go over to the RK5, watch the blue line and listen. As I increase the bias voltage, you hear nothing. Even as I'm up around 2 volts, I have to get between 2 and 3 volts before you start to hear some of the audio creep through. So this ignores CVs below the 2 to 3 volt range. And then it only amplifies the incoming signal between that 2 to 3 volt range and a 5 volt maximum. So it really picks up quickly in this range. Just a small CV range is a considerable change in audio level. I'll back it off again. You see, even though I have, you know, over 3 volts coming in, only a low level of audio is coming out. And then we cut off at around, say, 2.5 volts. What this means, I'll turn my bias voltage off, is that it's going to ignore part of the envelope. As soon as the decaying envelope falls below that 2.25 two volt threshold, this low pass gate is going to immediately fall into its own release time. It's going to ignore the envelope, and from that point on, it's going to go through its own natural decay. So it gives you a very different envelope than just feeding an envelope generator into a normal low pass gate. I'm going to bring back my pulses and let it decay over time so you can see what's going on. And again, that blue line is the decay of my envelope. And even if I go to really long decay times, the RK5's character doesn't change that much because as soon as my envelope does that exponential decay below 3 volts, this is going to go into its normal decay. Therefore, if I get a very short impulse, I'm just starting that natural decay that much sooner. And again, the audio is overlaid on this big DC offset that's coming through this filter. That means the positive side of your waveform is going to clip sooner, and you're going to get this subsonic DC thump superimposed on your signal. What it also means is if you have an envelope that feeds more than 5 volts, that's going to be like a flat spot in the sound coming out of the RK5. For example, the envelopes coming out of the mother are about 7 volts or so. I have it through an attenuate inverter that can multiply up to times 2. So as I increase the envelope amount over 5 volts, we're just going to get a flat spot or a longer attack. It becomes sort of an attack hold release generator at this point. So we have maximum level, clipping on the high excursion of the waveform because of that DC offset. And as soon as our envelope here falls below that 3 volt threshold, the low pass gate goes into its normal decay. I really have to go for quite a long envelope to extend it at all. Quite an unusual profile. Let's go ahead and back off the input voltage. And reduce the decay time. So ironically, all these idiosyncrasies of the RK5, if anything, makes it more responsive to how you change the way that you're driving it. The length of the decay, the level of the envelope that you're feeding it with. Just don't expect it to act like a normal envelope generator to a VCA. It's a very different beast than that. These are basically kind of unusual abstract parameters to shape the attack and decay portion of the RK5 sound. Let's go ahead and add some modulation back in. Play a higher pitch or a lower pitch. Get to something snappier here. More of a hard thonk there. We'll go to the fast side of the RK5. Just a chirp there with a very slight attack. And again, the bleed-throughs aren't too bad.
You hear a little bit of the oscillator tone come through, but not as bad as some traditional low-pass gates. So in summary, I value having different sounds and different options in my modular. To me, that's what modular is all about, choices. And if you like low-pass gates, this one sounds different than probably any other one you've heard so far. So it will definitely add some variety to your system.